It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Welcome back to Football Therapy, my dear sweet friend. Sorry for the low cut wife beater today, apparently it's a little bit revealing. But I'm feeling good and I'm feeling sexy. Welcome back to Football Therapy into a uh, a presser Chelsea News type video in the press conference room. But we are going to reference David Ornstein's piece. As in his written published piece. To talk about how Graham Potter got canned. Now, of course, Graham Potter has been canned. We had reacted here late yesterday. And today... We're going to get some insight and talk about it, reflect perhaps a little bit more with hindsight uh, and, you know, more of a processed vibe. Uh, also, if you know, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of content on the channel out soon uh, reacting to potential suitors, where we're going to go, uh, where you're going to be when we win the Champions League this season, inevitably. So there's much to get into and I thank you for joining me here on the channel. Uh, I do appreciate it. And I'm happy you're here. <laughs> so thanks for liking the video. And thanks for subscribing. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So David Ornstein writes on his column, I suppose. Potter's Chelsea departure explained Nagelsmann link. Uh, and he speaks about Manchester United. But we don't care about those guys. Um, getting mugged off by Newcastle. Hardly revenge though for the cup final. But we're here to talk about Chelsea. Um, if you are interested in my immediate feelings and musings on the uh, dismissal, consider watching my previous upload. But I think we're about to find out why this became untenable. Just want to say, uh, Todd Bowley, as much as I do still back him in being the right candidate to take over Chelsea from Roman Abramovich in terms of who was available, he is looking a bit silly. The Mr. I don't want to do Roman Abramovich things has done, well, to be honest, he has done something that isn't a Roman Abramovich thing. And that is sack two permanent managers in a single season. Yeah. Chelsea and Graham Potter parting ways was without doubt the story of the weekend and there's a lot we will dig into and explain on The Athletic around it in the coming days and we will be here on Football Therapy so when you subscribe make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on these sensational stories. On Sunday morning, even some members of the Chelsea hierarchy were under the impression he would still be in charge of Tuesday's Premier League game at home to Liverpool, which of course is tomorrow, and I wonder who's doing the pre-match press conference. I guess Bruno? <sighs> um, but things changed rapidly. Mm -mm -mm. With Potter dismissed just after 31 matches in charge, and the decision unanimous. Unanimous. So everybody, everyone. Hmm. While we gather the inside story and find out what the club have planned in the coming days, we're going to use the start of the week's column to explain how we got here. Hmm. Why is Potter gone? Well, many of you will have a clear understanding of that, but let's just have a quick read. -y. Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital Chelsea's owners felt results were too disappointing and not seeing the progress they wanted. Yes. <laughs> The team slipped into the bottom half of the Premier League table after Saturday's defeat at home by Aston Villa, with Champions League football next season almost definitely now reliant on winning it this year, which is obviously a tough task. We will not finish in the top four. That is absolutely nailed on, ladies and gentlemen. So don't consider, you know, we haven't we haven't been on that possibility. Unless we win every 10, all the 10 games and everyone else, like, just fails. It's just not going to happen. Anyway, look. The loss at home, again, I explained in yesterday's video when Potter came out and said it's always disappointing to the fans when we lose at home. And for me, that was my tipping point because it's not when we lose at home, Graham. If, you're, if you are the Brighton manager, and I didn't subscribe to this, oh, he's got the Brighton manager mentality, perhaps until this moment when he said it's always tough to lose at home. And he said that three or four times. We lost at home. And I was like, no, we don't lose, bruv. Chelsea, it's tough when you lose. Not lose at home, period. I'm snapping my fingers because I'm feeling hella sassy. Um, despite being defiant in their backing of the former Brighton manager when results were poor, either side of the World Cup break, 
Concerns have grown considerably in recent weeks and the club's four key decision makers, which was Todd Bowley, Badalek Bali, Director of Global Talent and Transfers, Paul Wynn Stanley, and Technical Director Lawrence Stewart. Very interesting. Of course, um, Paul Wynn Stanley came from Brighton. So he followed Potter to Chelsea and was like, yeah, you see this guy that just got over for me that we've come from the same company? Get him at interesting um they weren't seeing the improvement they were looking for no 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 chelsea have won just four of their 19 premier league games despite impressive performances in europe that is just not good even though again i watched that villa game i was like yeah we played well but if it's like if it's a mood thing an aura thing even if tactically we're setting up well enough to win the game like something's got to give four wins in 19 games <laughs> Potter is believed to have taken the news um, delivered face to face at the training ground incredibly professionally and has agreed a severance package unrelated to the five year deal he signed when he placed, replaced the sacked Thomas Tuchel last September um, wow that's great I, I was worried about that Chelsea spent 25 million getting him and his crew out of Brighton or something sign him on a five-year deal he's the fourth highest paid manager in world football fourth highest paid manager in world football we signed him on a five-year deal if we had to pay him off that after spending 22 million so whatever your opinion on Graham Potter is man Good on him. Do you know what I mean? Because he he didn't have to leave Brighton. Obviously, he got paid a lot of money. It's Chelsea's great experience. He could just dug his feet, and he has been incredibly professional. He's just not a uh, bad guy. He really isn't. And clearly, he's like, look, I understand. Yeah, let's stop this. You know, I appreciate you backed me X amount, but, you know, results are results. And don't worry, you don't have to pay me this five-year, you know, um, package off. We'll just agree a severance. Um, and apparently it's been very amicable, very agreeable, and a smooth transition will occur with certain staff staying at the club. Billy, is it Billy Reed's assistant's gone? But Bruno's staying, he's the interim. Um, obviously people like Carl McCauley, who's the uh, scouting dude, who was interestingly like, he was like his right-hand man, Potter's right-hand man for like players. I wonder if he will go to Potter in his next job. Or if he's going to be like, right, right, mate, I want to stay at Chelsea. <laughs> Pot is like, i got another job. I'm the Southampton manager. Come on, Kyle. And he's like, sitting in, the, you know, like a big office at Cobham and Southampton Bridge going, da, 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 just ignoring his calls. Um, bless him. That's mean. Anyway, that's live. That's what other people say. Players and most of the staff. We're not told in advance in order to avoid leaks. Woo! Yeah, I read that. Most of them um, heard from social media and they were texting or calling their respective agents, being like, bruv, what's going on here? Have we, our managers been sacked? Uh, many of them probably would be okay with that, but they would be, you know, wanting to know what's happening. Yeah, I mean, it's not all good being a footballer, is it? Imagine just not knowing this stuff. What about Tuesday against Liverpool? Well, yes, quite. One of the most unusual parts of Potter's departure is that most of his backroom staff will stay in place until a successor is hired. This is something Potter has supported. Lovely. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. That means the former Brighton defender and captain Bruno Saltor will be in charge for the home game against Liverpool on Tuesday and possibly after that. Bruno worked under Potter after retiring as a player in 2019, and the Spaniard moved to Stamford Bridge alongside him earlier this season. And by the way, this was the one that like, almost hurt Brighton fans the most, because they knew Potter would go somewhere, whether it's Tottenham or in, you know, ends up Chelsea and this, that, and the other. But they were really, a lot of the fans were really upset we took Bruno. Um, and you know, I was just like, well, you know, whatever. So it was, all, it was all pretty peculiar in hindsight. The board wanted some consistency and believe the infrastructure is there to bounce back in the league. Second half of the season, we're doing a title challenge um, and compete against holders Real Madrid in a two-leg Champions League quarterfinal. 
on April the 12th and 18th. Woohoo! Will Chelsea move fast for Julian Nagelsmann? This is something, of course, we will discuss in greater detail in the coming hours and days. Hit that bell notifications icon when you subscribe. Julian Nagelsmann was sacked by Bayern Munich less than two weeks ago. Do we want to dive straight in? And he's already been linked with Chelsea. Also, manager, managerless Tottenham Hotspur. Real Madrid, PSG, and Paris Saint-Germain. He's being linked, I suppose, Real Madrid, Carlo's got to, like, spire eventually as a manager, not as in terms of his mortal coil. Although we all die eventually. Um, and PSG. At this stage, it is unclear whether he will end up uh, where he will end up and when. And Chelsea were insistent on Sunday night that they will be taking their time and ensuring the search for the new head coach will be exhaustive and thorough. And that they have yet to speak to any candidates for the permanent position. I wonder if that's true. Because remember, when we canned Big Tommy Took, suddenly out of nowhere, Graham Potter was just, oh yeah. <laughs> It was just there. Oh, I've suddenly got the idea to join Chelsea. But, you know, so they keep their cards close to their chest regardless. Um, like most clubs, they do have a list of managers they admire and they will be updated in the coming days and weeks. The possibility that all the above uh, sides will be looking for a new head coach before the season next season means competition will be high. But Chelsea feel removing Potter now may give them a head start on the likes of PSG and Madrid because, of course, they've still got Galtier and Ancelotti, respectively. Uh, Stewart and Winstanley will look to identify the coach they believe can deliver trophies. Are these guys equipped to tell us who can deliver trophies? And what's Vivelle doing in this? Shouldn't Vivelle be the one on the blower to Nago's man who's got um, links with him and be like, you know, how's it going, mine brooder? Come on down to Stamford Bridge. Um, yeah, so they want to look for a coach that will deliver trophies with a squad that has been assembled at an enormous cost. Boy, don't we know it. And then make a recommendation to B uh, Bowley and Egg Barley. As the, um, the, this like, article goes on, it's quite interesting. Uh, I urge you to go read it. It's behind a paywall, so I won't read it all. But that's most of the juicy stuff regarding Chelsea. Right! Thank you, Potter. We hardly knew ye, but the boys gave everything. Nagel's man? I don't know, brother. I, um, I don't know. Is the answer. He, I, I was talking about him when he was 27 or 28, and he became Hoffenheim's first team coach. I was told a couple of my mates when I was a bit more back then of a football hipster, and I thought it was amazing how this guy, um, you know, similar, similar age to me, was, like, m managing... Um, these these people, these guys way older than him in a top flight uh, league in a top five league in the top flight a top five league <laughs> anyway uh, of course he's gone from strength to strength to, to Leipzig and Bayern and um, yeah it wasn't terrible at Bayern but I just wonder is this the answer are, are Chelsea going to be more careful are they going to be like two year deal um, you know um, and a little bit more less all in on a coach then maybe that'll be smart of course there's the benfica manager i forget his name there's a few names that are being banded around but you know nagelsman is he going to command the respect i mean potter the thing is potter was a nice guy and he's a senior guy and he's nice and he's managed the premier league nagelsman will come in you know uh, he's younger than tiago silva and uh, anyone else possibly not but he's you know he's <sighs> I don't know, man. It's going to be tough. Um, I will obviously look at this a little bit more. If Chelsea do look like they're going to sign him, I'll do videos, talk about his formations, how he likes to play. We can do scouting reports on the manager. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Like we used to do, like the good old times here on Football Therapy. And if you want more good old times or good new times, make sure you subscribe. When you hit the like button, hey, you watching all this way and you're yet to like it, thank you for doing it now. I love you very much. Keep it locked and I'll see you soon. Peace.